In this video, you'll see how AWS Systems Manager integration with Windows PowerShell DSC makes it possible to manage your Windows Server instances by implementing configurations that enforce compliance to a desired state. With native PowerShell Desired State Configuration, or DSC support in AWS Systems Manager, you can use custom workflows to manage and report compliance of Windows instances at scale. You can use your own Windows Configuration Managed Object Format, or MOF files, or you can import files from the public PowerShell gallery, which contains over 800 community-developed DSC resources. To begin, you need to upload the MOF file containing the desired configuration for your instances to an Amazon Simple Storage Service, or S3 bucket. For the purposes of this example, we've already done that. This MOF file contains the configuration settings we want to enforce for Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud, or EC2 instances, running Windows Server. In this case, we are specifying that the IIS web server role should be installed on each instance, and that remote desktop access should be disabled to improve security. Now let's navigate to State Manager in AWS Systems Manager to create an association that will check our instances against the specifications in our MOF file. A State Manager association is a configuration that is assigned to your managed instances to define the state you want to maintain. Let's create a new association. You can provide a name for the association. Next, specify the document that will define the desired state. For this association, we're going to specify the document that allows us to use the MOF file to update running EC2 instances and enforce compliance. Next, under Parameters, we'll specify the MOF file we want to apply. You can choose to apply the MOF, which will correct any non-compliant resources, or to simply report non-compliance without changing anything. In this case, we'll apply the MOF. Next, let's update the compliance type we'll use when reporting compliance. Now, let's select the instances we want to target with the document. For this example, we'll target instances with a tag key of build and tag value of standard. If desired, you can specify a schedule to run your association. Let's retain the default settings. You can also specify association compliance severity, which will be reflected on your compliance dashboard. Let's specify high severity. Now, let's create the association. When we review this association, you'll see that no resources are listed yet. This is because the association did not detect any running EC2 instances that matched our tag value. To generate some instances that will be affected by our new association, let's navigate to AWS CloudFormation and create a stack. This is the template file we'll use to create the stack. This file specifies that we will create three EC2 instances for Windows Server, each with the build key value of standard, which matches the association we defined earlier. The file does not specify the installation of the IIS web server role, and it does not limit RDP access. Now, let's go through the steps to create this stack. First, Specify the template file to upload. Next, provide a name for the stack. Specify the key pair to use to securely connect to the instances. Then, specify the S3 bucket where the MOF file is stored. This tells the stack to use the MOF file we reviewed earlier to configure the instances with the desired state after they have been deployed. By deploying resources this way using CloudFormation, you can enforce compliance and ensure resources are in the desired state as they are provisioned.
Now, complete the configuration and review the settings. Select the Acknowledgement checkbox and create the stack. Now that the stack has been created, let's switch to the EC2 Management Console to take a look at our new instances. As you can see, the three instances have been created. Notice they all have a value of standard for the build tag, as we specified earlier. By configuring our instances using the MOF file, the desired state has already been applied during the creation of the stack. So let's see what Systems Manager tells us. Navigate to Compliance. Because the association has not had a chance to run yet, the Compliance dashboard is telling us that the resources are non-compliant. So let's run the association manually to force it to check compliance now. Now let's return to the Compliance Dashboard. As you can see, the resources are now correctly being reported as compliant. Let's navigate back to the EC2 Management Console and do a couple of quick tests to ensure that our instances are now in the desired state. First, let's copy the URL of this instance so we can paste it in a new browser window to check whether the IIS web server role has been installed. As you can see, IIS has been successfully configured on this instance. Now, let's try to connect to this instance using RDP. The RDP connection failed, indicating that we successfully disabled RDP access to the instances with our MOF file. Administrators should still be able to connect to and manage the instances using Session Manager. Let's navigate there now and give it a try. Session Manager provides secure and auditable instance management without the need to open inbound ports, maintain bastion posts, or manage SSH keys. Simply select a server and start a session. As you can see, we can manage this instance from here. For example, let's restart the web server. You've just seen how AWS Systems Manager integration with Windows PowerShell DSC makes it possible to manage your Windows Server instances by implementing configurations that enforce compliance to a desired state. Thanks for watching. Now it's your turn to try.